that accurately diagnosing a cultural ill while a good thing is incredibly destructive when you're just using that to lure young men in to a path of self-destruction. Andrew Tate is an incredibly dangerous man. Liz, you saw the Tucker Carlson interview like everyone else. And uh, Andrew Tate claimed that the Romanian government and law enforcement's after him because of he's a lover boy. Uh, I, I think you completely disagree with that, that he's not some innocent lover boy, that he actually is perhaps a, a danger or a menace or a criminal, for lack of a better description. You, you tell us. Yeah, so this is not just my opinion on Andrew Tate. If you listen to his own words, he's a very provocative character. I watched the Andrew Tate interview on Tucker Carlson like almost everyone else in the world. It is, as Tate will remind you repeatedly, the most watched sit-down interview in our history. I know there's a little bit of a difference between a Twitter interview and a broadcast interview, but it's the most it's the most viewed interview of all time. A, he influences a lot, a lot of people. You'd be hard-pressed to talk to a young man who wasn't influenced in some way by Andrew Tate. And I thought to myself, well, listen, he's a very charismatic person. I understand he's like seductive. I understand why people, not just women fall for him, but why all these young men fall for him, because he accurately diagnoses a serious problem in our culture. Our society tells young men that masculinity is toxic. Young men are told that they shouldn't want to protect and provide for their wives and families. They shouldn't want to procreate. Our society feminizes men, and this has become even more prominent in the Me Too era. Young men, even if they're not politically minded, feel this. They feel this assault on inherently who God made them to be. And Andrew Tate accurately diagnoses that. He looks at young men and he says, no, you should be strong. You should be masculine. And then we have the problem. That's how he draws people in. But what he prescribes as the antidote to this accurately diagnosed cultural ill is he prescribes poison. He doesn't say, young men, you should be the man that God created you to be. Instead, he points young men towards materialism. He points young men to exploitation of women. He points young men to pornography. He points young men to worship of self. So I would argue that accurately diagnosing a cultural ill while a good thing is incredibly destructive when you're just using that to lure young men in to a path of self-destruction. Andrew Tate is an incredibly dangerous man. You, I have listened, and I don't know a great deal about Andrew Tate. The Tucker Carlson interview was my first deep dive. I've seen the pushback and backlash. You're someone that believes his little web, webcam story is not accurate or not full of context, that it's, it maybe does fit the definition of human trafficking or sex trafficking? Well, I think one of the defense strategies or the deflection strategies that Andrew Tate is using right now is trying to conflate his legal issues in Romania with the moral commentary that conservatives like me have been giving about the message that he is that he is offering to young men. I don't know about his Romanian legal issues. I suspect that they could be accurate legal charges. We will have to wait and see on that. However, he is making a defense based on his legal issues to avoid the fact that, Jason, you and I know that it's completely immoral. It's completely wrong to seduce young women and trick them into performing pornographic acts in front of a webcam and then profiting off of that. Andrew Tate and his brother have admitted that they pimp women. This, this is fundamentally moral, I immoral. Our society knows this. You know this. I know this. Everyone watching this show knows this. And yet this is what he's offering young men. So my critique of him is that young men shouldn't be listening to him. Young men should be listening to, well, really, they shouldn't be putting any human person on a pedestal. They should be trying to be the godly men that they were created to be. But Andrew Tate was the most Googled man in all the world last year. People who Young men specifically who are feeling attacked by our culture are turning to him for advice and for guidance. And even some conservatives are doing this. And it actually blows my mind that conservatives or so-called red-pilled young men don't see what Andrew Tate is doing with them. It's, it's almost like uh, the strategy that the Antichrist employs, right? Where he says, he, he empathizes with your grievances, but then what he says that he will do in order to address those grievances is I will make you happy. I will make you prof profitable. I will make you prosperous. If only you don't worship God, if only you worship me instead. That's what Andrew Tate is offering. So my critique of him is almost purely a moral critique, although 
it's not a huge stretch to it's not a huge stretch to think that that would extend to legal issues as well. All right. So just in the interest of transparency, everybody knows watching, listening. I'm friends with Tucker Carlson. I'm a supporter of Tucker Carlson. Uh, Tucker and I round the same age. And so I'm probably a bit more sympathetic towards Tucker and his interview with Andrew Tate and, and sitting there going, well, man, until this interview and the pushback, I didn't know all these things about Andrew Tate. I, I wasn't a consumer of Andrew Tate's content. I kind of heard about him, didn't understand the controversy around him. And, but, but am I being too sympathetic offering Tucker that fig leaf of protection of saying, well, I could I could sit there and say, man, whew, glad I didn't land that interview because I could have made the exact same <laughs> mistakes as Tucker if if I didn't do a bunch of research. I could see myself interviewing Andrew Tate and accepting his answers and not knowing all the background. Are you sympathetic towards Tucker Carlson and and his two and a half hour interview with Andrew? Oh, listen, I love Tucker Carlson. I've been one of his biggest defenders. I think Fox News wronged him, and I think they're paying the price for that. I think it's wonderful that he's on Twitter because he's reaching a younger demographic than you can reach on cable news anyway. I know he's going to be wildly successful in everything he did. One of my favorite videos, actually, from the past week was him absolutely slaughtering the Republican contenders in Iowa, especially when he asked Asa Hutchinson how many vac COVID jabs he'd gotten. And Asa Hutchinson asked him, well, how many COVID jabs have you gotten? And Tucker goes, zero. I've gotten zero. I love Tucker Carlson. So, yes, this is a critique of Tucker's work. But that's the thing. When you, when you like someone, you're a fan of them, you respect their work, it doesn't mean that every single thing they do, you have to come to their defense. I haven't personally talked to Tucker about this interview, so I don't know how much background he was briefed on about Andrew Tate prior to this. I know Tucker has said he doesn't spend a lot of time on social media, so perhaps he's unaware. Um, I plan to send him this video that, uh, that I made go viral on Twitter of Andrew Tate's own words exposing who Andrew Tate is. I encourage you to send it to him as well. I'd be interested in his take on it if it changes his view on Andrew Tate. I suspect it will because Tucker Carlson is a fair-minded individual. He's not dogmatic about things when he misses a piece of information or misrepresents a person or a situation. He oftentimes corrects it, which is one of the reasons I respect him in an industry where so many people maybe operate in a way that aren't worthy of respect. So this is less a critique of Tucker Carlson, more of a critique of Andrew Tate, although the fact does remain that the view count, the sheer number of people who watched that interview, Tucker did, intentionally or otherwise, I'd probably say unintentionally, he did give Andrew Tate a platform to manipulate people and misrepresent what he's done and what he's doing in a way that, I mean, con artists are always very, very, um, charismatic. They're very convincing. I found myself, I knew all about Andrew Tate before this interview, and I found myself watching the first 40 minutes being like, wow, is that true? Is that really what's happening? Until I stepped back and I was like, wait a second, here's the facts that we have on the table. That's not actually true. So I'm sympathetic to the people who watched this, who wonder if Andrew Tate is being wronged or wonder if Andrew Tate has influenced young men in a more positive manner than his immorality has um, cause destruction in their lives. But I think ultimately, if we are setting emotion aside and just looking at the facts of the matter, that, that the conclusion has to be that Andrew Tate is leading young men astray. Like what you saw? Hit that like button, subscribe, and check out the full episode by clicking the link below.